It's been just over a year since the initial release of Finding Freedom, the bombshell biography about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's exit from royal life. But now an updated version of the book, which hit shelves yesterday, is giving readers a further insight into the couple's lives, including the aftermath of their interview with Oprah Winfrey. Yes, we're joined now by the book's author, Omid Scobie. Now, it's Morning. so lovely to have you here today, Omid. Thanks so much for coming Thanks and talking to us. I always wonder how, I suppose, biographies work. So, Harry and Meghan were unable to release their own biography. So, sort of, that's where you come in. How do you get to find out so much about their lives? You know, because obviously we read, we read untold amounts of press and, yeah. you know, different sort of views on what it might be like to be them, to be around them, to work for them. But how do you how do you come in? How do what, what's the sort of level of access you get? Yeah, well, I've been covering royals since William and Kate got married. So mm. over the years, you get close with the palace staff, the people right. working around members of the royal family, and that was kind of really how it started with the Sussexes. You know, mm. you sort of build that relationship. But of course, my background's also entertainment news, so yes. I knew a lot of people that knew Meghan as well, and so. The idea for this book really came around when we started to see that a lot of the papers were sort of building this caricature of Harry and Meghan that I wasn't seeing in front of me. So there was this opportunity here to sort of tell the other side of the story. But mm -hmm. what's been really frustrating throughout this process is that the papers, or the tabloids, I should say, constantly refer to me as the friend of the couple, the cheerleader, the mouthpiece of the couple. They claim that Harry and Meghan were behind the book. And quite frankly, that's just not true. The reality is that this was a book written by two royal correspondents that felt that relying just on palace sources wasn't enough because there was clearly another side to the story there. So, so it's something that you are prompted to do yourself, so it's not something that you get asked to do? No, you do it, and it's unauthorised. So whether really, whether Harry and Meghan liked it or not, we wanted to tell that other side to the story. So have you not heard from Harry and Meghan whether they like it or if, if at all they've read yeah. the book? Well, the couple were aware that, obviously, you know, they know what the journalists are doing around them as they're working, and I was there, of course, every step of the way throughout their lives as working members of the royal family. Mm -hmm. So... They're aware of what's going on, but obviously they have no control over it. So there are certain things in the book that do challenge some of the decisions that they've made that mm -hmm. maybe the couple might not agree with. I would imagine that, like most sane people yeah. in the public eye, they stay away from reading this kind of thing. But obviously the book was dragged into a very high-profile court case where Meghan was taking yeah. on the Daily Mail, and this book was dragged into that. And so, of course, it sort of forced the couple to be aware of pretty much what was on every single right. page. And I, I always wonder with these things as well, because I know, for example, if I was going to write uh, a tell-all book, as it were, on my friend Alison's life, <laughs> you know, we know each other, we work yeah. with it, I've had access to you, I, that's something that I could do. If that... But also, but... You would, I would get a letter saying, Rochelle has said all this about me. Are you happy with well, that to be, go out? Well, yeah. there'd be a level of approval to yeah. it, right? So you would say, OK, that's, you know, I... It, it, does that yeah. process happen? Do they approve what you say? Well, firstly, I would 100% read that book. <laughs> <laughs> would be, it, this is, I, I'm literally getting that my knees on the story. Here. She's doing her own, she beat me to it. Yeah, I, I think there's a sort of a... There's a courtesy call that comes into play when you're a royal correspondent, you're around the palace staff, you're going to write a book about a member of the royal family. And this has happened with every biography that we've yeah. seen unauthorised over the years. You tell the palace what you're doing. You tell the palace roughly what your hopes are with the book. And they can choose to either sort of play along with that or they can keep you at arm's length because they're worried about the contents of it. Right. What we found is that although the palace weren't particularly keen to always be involved throughout the process, friends of the couple who saw a pair that were constantly being written about, yeah. talked about, and couldn't defend themselves because of that famous palace mantra, never complain, mm. never explain, they felt that perhaps there was an opportunity for them to set some of the records straight on mm -hmm. some of the really damaging things that we've read about Meghan, you know, okay. that Duchess Difficult character that was created on the pages of the tabloids was so far from the person that the people that knew Meghan yeah. or worked with mm -hmm. Meghan felt that they saw. And they, I think many people, including myself, felt that that really leaned heavily on some really ugly racist and sexist stereotypes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that were kind of getting out of control and taking on a life of their own. So that was kind of the hope with the book, that we could provide the other side to the story. So 
out in the public domain. It sits alongside all the other tabloid stuff. Well, I do actually feel, with the Oprah Winfrey interview in particular, that it was a massive eye-opener. And I think yeah. you did get that feeling of, oh, my goodness, what well, have they been through? Yeah. And obviously the palace did respond yeah. to the allegations of racism. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Um, but th what I'm saying is, was you quite surprised at some of the things they had said or did you kind of expect it? No, I think, you know, one of the things that we really went heavy on in the book was mm. the difficulties they faced from the institution of the monarchy, the Palisades that were leaking stories to the British tabloids that some cases did not make them look good and there was an agenda there. And, you know, we heard a lot about that from the couple themselves in the Oprah interview. Now, I have to remember, when we wrote this book, they were unable to speak. They were unable to say yes to things like Oprah. And we yes, didn't so know it, from the beginning. This is taking a complete but, turn, I suppose, yeah. isn't it? It's not the book that you initially set out right. Exactly. This was going to set some rumours straight and it was also going to, I guess, give the story of their love story, their romance, which is in itself is an incredible read. But as time went on and it was around the wedding, we started to hear from sources that there were conversations between the couple, their staff, about some of the grievances they felt with the institution. And I say the institution because that's the sort of business of mm, the firm mm. rather than this the family side. This is what always confuses too. me. This is what always sort of blows my mind a little bit. You know, when you refer to the palace, I w I'm always, I'm no never sure who you mean, <laughs> you know? It's just, it's so... It's the people It's sort of them, unknown, isn't it, to us? Yeah. So were you, as Alison said, were you surprised about the things that were mentioned or were you already very aware of those? Would, would, would that have all been in your book anyway? No, there were things that surprised me. I think hearing the depths of Meghan's mental health struggles. You know, that was something that we really stayed away from in the book, was to speculate on someone's mental health or their feelings. You know, that's a story for them to tell. So to actually hear it was news to us as well. Right. I don't think we really knew that it was as bad until she had shared that information with the world. And of course, the racism allegations, yeah. which we knew they had contended with issues surrounding race within the institution. I myself have experienced some prejudice from one or two royal aides in the past. So oh. you can kind of know what Meghan was entering. And so it didn't surprise me, but I think for it to mention a family member, that was kind of the moment that even myself, my jaw was on the floor, just, mm -hmm. just like Oprah, you know, it was the yeah. same reaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. What about the palace response to that? Was you, was you happy with that response? And also, uh, do you think both Meghan and Harry expected that response? Mm. Yeah, you know, it took a while for that response to come out. You know, the mm -hmm. show aired and it was like a day and a half yeah. went by. And we were told by a palisade that it was to sort of gauge the mood of the nation before they actually put what, the, the paper. What the pause was, the, you know, the yeah. reason of them waiting. Um, and also for people within the family to actually see the show itself, uh, the interview. But I think, as we say in the updates of the book, you know, that phrase, recollections may vary, which... You know, it's firstly not the Queen saying that. That's having spoken to people within the family, within the institution, and they're the ones saying that actually that's not how we remember it. She's kind of the messenger in this case. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, that those were words that stood out to the couple because it didn't take full ownership of something potentially grotesque that took place. And we've not heard anything from it since. You know, let's not forget the energy that we saw when Meghan was accused of being an office bully, basically. You know, there was a mm -hmm. press statement that went out to all That's the journalists around the that, world yeah. saying that there was going to be an internal investigation. There have been off-the-record updates and briefings since then yeah. to various journalists. But if you ask about the racism, the lips are sealed. And I think that that's a missed opportunity because at the very least, the monarchy could have at least condemned racism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We heard William say that they're not a racist family and that's a really respectable response in that moment that he was asked. But you know, there have been moments since to perhaps speak up on the matter. Um, there was also the resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement. We did not hear the royal family speak in that moment too. So, you know, it, it sort of, that silence you, speaks volumes. You, 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 you touched on before race and prejudice. You said someone was racist to you. I wouldn't say racist, but I just what experienced you prejudice. You know, I'm mixed race. There aren't mm -hmm. many mixed race royal correspondents mm -hmm. out and, there. And, but to be... But by, by who? I, I would not name that person. A family member or no, an a, aide? A, a, someone very senior within the palace who found it really peculiar that I spoke as well as I do. And that was pretty much how they said wow. it to me. 
And, you know, I'm used to kind of where are you from, where are you really from and all that kind of stuff. But that was a very loaded comment. And mm -hmm. I'm sure it came from a, not from a nasty place, but it just shows perhaps a level of unawareness within certain courses of the institution. Mm -hmm. And when you think of Megan, the first biracial senior or family member, of course she's gonna deal with that on a like 100 times bigger scale. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely that. What about the rift between, um, well, the, the alleged rift between <laughs> William and Harry? Do you think that's been resolved now since he came back for his granddad's funeral? Yeah, you know, I think one thing I really wanted to give in this update was a positive update on yeah. the sort of family fractures and how they've mended. Unfortunately, that hasn't really happened. And I think a lot of that's down to do with the pandemic. You know, none of us have been going anywhere. Harry and Meghan live almost 4,000 miles away. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when Harry's here for those really important family moments, and there have been two of them, the unveiling of the statue yeah. for Diana, but also Prince Philip's funeral, those moments everyone involved has made sure that the focus remains on that and nothing yeah. else. So there hasn't really been that opportunity well, to sit down. Well, I think that's the down. respectful thing to do, isn't it? And I think family situations are hard in anybody's family, Completely. right? And everybody yeah. has, you know, those moments and those periods of time that aren't very nice. But to have the world looking at you and to be on the world stage... And you're is, grieving as well. And grieving mm. and, you know, dealing with pregnancies and, you know, it's... It, it can't be the easiest, yeah. you know. Not the time or the place, but I wish that there was a... You know, look, we've all experienced family squabbles Absolutely. and so on. There's always a senior member of the family that sort of, like, clips you around the ear and pulls you all together yes. and says, talk. And I haven't heard that from any source connected to the family, that there has been someone that's played that role. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if Diana was here today, that's exactly what she would do, but... I've certainly not heard that from any of the others. Well, I could sit and talk to you <laughs> all day long. I find this so, so interesting. It's out um, now, uh, the Sunday Times number one bestseller. Well done. Uh, Finding Freedom, yes. Harry and Meghan. It's yes. out now. Thank you Thank so, you so much, Amy. Thank you. Thank Lovely you. to talk to you.